Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Travis and this is Bacon and Backpacking. I'm joined by my lovely girlfriend Sarah. We are here in the Wayne National Forest in Ohio. More specifically, we are on the Wildcat Hollow backpacking loop. So we are doing the full loop. I think it comes out to just over 15 miles. Nothing crazy, just doing an overnighter. But um, guys, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around because we have a new toy. Not gonna give it away yet, but Sarah bought a very nice ultralight tent that we'll be using for uh, you know the week that we spend out in Utah on the Uinta High Line. So we're gonna get a first look at Sarah's new tent today. So guys, let me tell you a little bit about the disparity in my last two trips. So I backpacked about two weeks ago. I was out for four days and there's about four or five feet of snow on the ground because I was in the Adirondack Mountains in New York. Fast forward two weeks later, back in the home state of Ohio and it's 80 degrees today, low of 60 and 80 degrees tomorrow. So feels good though you know I had 40 pounds in my pack on that Adirondack trip and for this trip you know I didn't you know weigh the pack with food and water but my base weight was under 10 pounds so it feels nice to you know be back to warmer weather backpacking for sure See this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was just looking for a trip somewhat close to home this weekend just for an overnighter, and I was really hesitating on coming back to Wildcat Hollow because I've actually been here once before almost exactly two years ago it's late april right now i think i went in you know early april two years ago and this trail was a disaster um you know i'm talking like a hundred blowdowns like i'm not even exaggerating i probably walked an extra mile mile and a half just kind of like bushwhacking you know off in the woods to you know try to get around all the blowdowns and stuff and i mean i've seen like one or two the whole time we've been out here so um you know i'm glad to see that they've cleaned it up you know it's not like a spectacular trail you know there's no vistas or you know mountain views or anything like that you know it's it's southern ohio right but um pretty diverse forest um you know it's been a pretty walk so far um you know so i'm glad they cleaned it up it's been much more pleasant this time around than it was two years ago for sure so if you're one of the ogs to the channel and you've been around for two years and you saw the last wildcat hollow video go ahead and uh introduce yourself down in the comments below
All right, everybody, a little trail update. So about six miles in, we're coming up on where we put our water cache. You know, Ohio's backpacking trails kind of all have a lot of the same problems. They're in, you know, reclaimed mining land and stuff like that. So there are heavy metals out in the water here. So, you know, it is advised that you don't pull water from any of the water sources out here. Now you can use, you know, something like a Grail or a Sawyer S3 that will, you know, filter out those heavy metals. But for this trip, we just said, hey, you know, we'll cache some water. Um, I'll show you guys where the culvert is, where we did that, but it's like right off the road. So, you know, on your way in, just drive past it, stash it, and then, you know, grab it. We're going to camp shortly after we pick up the water cache. You know, we'll probably only go another mile or something like that. I cached two and a half liters, and I think Sarah cached. What'd you do, too? Yeah, and Sarah has two liters as well, too. So we're going to pick that up here um, probably another mile and then camp about a mile after that. All right, everybody. And then for your situational awareness, so we're hiking clockwise. So... We're popping out on Irish Ridge Road, and over there, you can see the trail continues on. Right over here to your left is like a little culvert, and uh, that's where we stashed the water. So it's a uh, little over seven miles into the trip, so it's pretty much like right at the halfway point, guys. So it makes it, you know, makes sense to stash water here. All right, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Redemption Campsite. Um, for those of you who saw the video two years ago, I hiked in about dark and I set up my hammock right where it is right now. And then uh, there's like 60 mile an hour winds and a lot of these big old trees were, uh, were creaking. The ground was kind of moving, stuff like that. And uh, I packed up, ended up hiking, you know, further down the trail found a different campsite. So anyways, guys, um, this is a pretty big campsite. I just wanna stay away from like that side. You can see there's like a big, you know, dead pine over there. So this is kind of like the fire ring area. I haven't set up my chair and stuff yet, but we're gonna be cooking over here. Now guys, here's one of the things I was telling you about. So for those of you who've been around, obviously that's my hammock set up. So that is the hammock gear. It's any tarp with doors is right there. And then underneath that tarp is the Warbonnet Blackbird. But we have a new addition to the channel. So for those of you who are ultralighters, like to save a little bit of pack weight, this is the Durston XMID 2 Plus. So the reason that we got this tent, guys, is like I said, we're going to be doing seven days on the Uinta Highline Trail. It's almost 100 miles out in Utah. And um, I don't really have a tent because I'm a hammocker. So what we were looking at is obviously we want to have like a super lightweight, you know, tent out there. We don't want to be carrying, you know, more gear than we need to. But we also needed one that is big enough for Sarah and I to both fit in with two wide sleeping pads. This would be 25 inch sleeping pads. So the Durston 2 Plus fit that bill. It is a Dyneema tent. As you can see, it's uh, slightly slightly transparent there let's kind of do a walk around it's the first time sarah's ever pitched it we didn't even like you know practice it in whole or you know at home or anything like that so um, i'm sure she'll get more skillful the more time she pitches it and, and that's kind of what we're doing right now for backpacking guys you can kind of see there's a vestibule on both sides um, there's like that zipper over here so there's a vestibule here and there's also a vestibule over on the other side as well too but it does use two trekking poles. It's a trekking pole tent. Um, guys, I believe this tent came in at about 21 ounces. Um, she has the Sil Poly floor, not the Dyneema floor, because the Dyneema floor wouldn't ship until August and our trip is in August. So obviously, guys, this is a you know very nice tent. I think it's almost $700. Super light for you know the size that you know it is, right? And, uh, you know, as Sarah uses it here, we'll obviously do a review for you guys. Um, you know, if you guys are interested in my tarp, I already have a video up on the channel of me reviewing the Hammock Gear Dyneema tarp. 
so anyways guys um you know we got everything set up so i think it's about time to eat relax until uh you know it's bedtime speaking of ultralight backpacking gear um we've got his and hers helinox cheer zeros we've been rocking those for well i've been rocking mine for probably two years and i think hers is about a year old but um yeah just because you're you know saving weight on trail doesn't mean you can't be comfortable all right guys i'm excited I'm gonna stay true to the channel name today got some fully cooked bacon it's obviously <laughs> way too warm to bring bring real uh, real bacon I'd have some sort of disease probably if I ate that we're gonna go ahead and slap that inside some beef flavored ramen noodles that we got here as soon as I see look at this <laughs> see that's the thing it sucks about like the windscreen I've got a system see look it makes the little pot grabbers yeah that ain't gonna work that looks dangerous. yeah it looks dangerous but I do have this. There we go. And then, uh, if you guys have been watching recently, you know, I've got my little Esbit stove right here. So, super light, but also, like, super inconvenient. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to throw some bacon in this ramen, let it cool down a little bit, and we're going to chow down. Morning, everybody. A little bit before eight o'clock here, so <clears throat> I'm gonna get my breakfast ready here, start packing up, and uh, hopefully be on trail here in I don't know 45 minutes or something. Not really in a hurry. I think we have like six and a half miles left today. I actually have this peak strawberry granola, uh, which is one of their breakfasts. It's actually you know just like a cold soaked breakfast. Never used that before, so um, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it is. All right, everybody, about to be Oscar Mike for day number two here. Sarah's doing a final walkthrough of her campsite, make sure we didn't leave anything behind. But yeah, like I said, guys, we got about six and a half miles today, nothing too crazy. It is pretty warm, but um, you know, this, this breeze and this wind's making it pretty nice. Like I said, it's supposed to be about 81 today. We should be out of here within the next three hours or so, but uh. Yeah, guys, been a pretty good trip so far, so let's go ahead and see what else the trail has to offer. Yeah, guys, the, the memories. If you were around two years ago, this is the campsite that I stayed at last time I was here. I was sitting on these logs, kind of recording over here by the fire ring, telling everybody the evening's happenings. And then uh, I believe I stayed on that tree and that tree. I think I used my hammock. Um, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the GPX file of this trip at the end of my video, like I do all of my videos now. So it'll have all my trip data. You'll be able to see the route that I took. I also marked this campsite and the one that we actually stayed at. 
so that way you guys kind of have you know an idea of where some of the campsites are at so anyways we're going to go ahead and continue our trek on this beautiful morning and we will get you guys some more good shots Well, everybody give you a little trail update so we're about 12 and a half miles in like I said the whole thing's you know just over 15 so just about got it wrapped up actually ran into a subscriber on trail uh, so it's nice to meet you Sean yeah we were just kind of discussing how you know he, he comes here all the time and he likes this trail and the only time I've ever been on it was you know two years ago when there's <laughs> 100 trees across the trail and you know blow down and i got chased off by a storm and you know it was honestly one of the worst you know backpacking trips i've ever done possibly the worst actually and um anyways i'm glad to say that my experience was completely different this time around the trails had very minimal in the way of you know obstructions blow down stuff like that all the uh, thorns are you know trimmed back and uh yeah the maintenance of the trails is pretty good we've had beautiful weather trails in pretty good shape you know, a little bit of odd mud here and there, but I mean, you know, that's just hiking, right? Especially for the season, like given that it's the end of April, you know, I would have thought it had been, you know, a lot more muddy. But anyways, yeah, much better trip this time around. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and walk along this ridge here in a little bit, probably get you some good shots from there. And, you know, we'll be about done. All right, everybody, so we're about 14 miles in, which means it's probably about time to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you know, appreciate your support watching the videos and everything like that. So uh, first thing, guys, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Second thing, if you want to see more backpacking videos, more gear reviews, stuff like that, have all kinds of videos up on the channel. I think we got about 60 videos up at this point. If you want to see more trips, more adventures, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Once you've liked and subscribed to the channel, uh, there are two resources down below in the description box. If you guys want to see what sort of gear I bring with me, how do you get a you know 10 pound base weight for a backpacking trip? I do have a link to my lighter pack. It's basically just you know a spreadsheet of all the gear that I brought with me on this trip. Second resource I have for you guys um, I was talking about a little bit earlier is that GPX document so no matter what app you use Gaia all trails on X you can go ahead and download that GPX data put it into your app that way you guys can plan you know your own route out here um, you can see the route that I took uh, you know the campsites things like that but as always guys um, just want to say really glad they got this place cleaned up way better of a trip than the last time I was here and uh, I would come back wouldn't you agree all right, cool. Sarah signed off on it, so must be good. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.